And good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Board of County Commissioners. Um, Board of County Commissioner meeting for April, Tuesday, April the 9th. Uh, I'm John Hutchings. I'm chair of the board. To my left is co-chair uh, Commissioner Gary Edwards. To my right is Commissioner Ty Menser. To his right is La Bonita Bomar, clerk of the board. To her right is County Manager Ramiro Chavez. And sitting next, seated next to him is Assistant County Manager and Finance Director uh, Robin Campbell. To her right is Elizabeth Petrich, our Deputy Processing Attorney Legal Advisor. So with that, uh, we please uh, join Commissioner Menser in leading us with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, is there any changes uh, or uh, amendments, whatever, to the agenda for today? No, sir. No? Okay. And is there a motion? I would uh, move to approve Tuesday, April 9th, 2019, the agenda for today. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That carries. We have an agenda and approval for the board meeting minutes from March 26th and April 7th of this year. I would move to approve the board meeting minutes from <clears throat> March 26th, 2019 and April 2nd, 2019. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Thank you. Now we're at the point of the agenda. Item number one, opportunity for the public to address the board and I have some rules of engagement. Excuse me. This uh, public engagement is, uh, uh, it's your time to talk to the board and address your board. It's not for us to engage in question and answer or discussion or debate. And so don't look for any response from us because uh, you shouldn't get one, and if you do, or if you don't, I don't want you to think we're being rude. <clears throat> the county manager will follow up with specific items next week if some things are brought to his attention, or even later on today. Speakers are limited to a total of three minutes to address the board. Um, speakers may not donate their time or their speaking time to another person. The board reserves the right to restrict a person's opportunity to address the meeting for a good cause. Please silence your phones. No comments that are lewd or offensive to a reasonable person. Please be respectful. No outbursts of any kind. No comments that are commercial in nature, such as promotion for a nonprofit or for a for profit business. No comments that are inflammatory, hateful, defamatory, or discriminatory. Any and in all materials provided to the county over to the bench here may be considered public record subject to proper public release upon request pursuant to the Public Records Act, Chapter 42.56 of the RCW. And please, no remarks about pending land use permits or similar matters that could eventually come before this board on appeal. Thank you for your uh, uh, attention for that, or to that. And uh, you're given three minutes, and up on the board here, you see it's a three-minute countdown, and <clears throat> Bob Benito Bomar, our clerk of the board, has the uh, the timer, and it times it times itself out. And when it hits a zero, you hear a chime, and that means your time is up. If you are mid sentence, go ahead and finish your uh, your comment, and, uh, and then we'll wrap it up and move on. What I'll do is I will call a list uh, of attendees or uh, people that would you like to speak. I'll call the first one to the podium. Please state your name and your address, and I'll have the other person come up and standing. Uh, uh, on the, in the wings, ready to go. And we'll continue until there's nobody else that wants to speak. So having said that, uh, let's start with Mary Ann Thompson. Mary Ann Thompson here, followed by Esther Cronenberg. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Can you get that microphone right smack in front of your mouth? Good afternoon. Thank you. Perfect. My name is Mary Ann Thompson, and I'm here today representing the Olympia Yacht Club. And where, where do you live, ma'am? 
Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I live at 201 Simmons Street okay. in Olympia. And I'm here representing the Olympia Yacht Club, and my mission, which I did choose to accept, was to invite you all to attend the opening day ceremonies for boating season in South Sound. This year it's happening at the Olympia Yacht Club on May 11th. Opening day celebrations are just one of the many events that the Yacht Club hosts each year to add to the richness of our community. Every year, the Yacht Club hosts around 500 kids in our sailing school. Talk about crime prevention in our youth. Um, we, uh, they learn to love Puget Sound, they get good water safety skills, and they become stewards for our waters. <coughs> Every year, high school sailors, again, hosted their boats, are, and the club is hosted at the Olympia Yacht Club, travel around the United States representing our county in national events. For many people in our community, the Lighted Boat Show kicks off the holiday season. Last year, we were surprised at the number, but I think there were a thousand people mm. on Percival Landing watching the Lighted Boats go by. And on the first Sunday of December every year, the Olympia Yacht Club hosts over 150 special needs adults. Um, we take them on a cruise uh, related to Santa Claus and host them for coffee and cookies later. So this year, I'm inviting you to please join the Olympia Yacht Club for opening day celebrations. We've been, ho oh, 8.30 in the morning. 8.30 in the morning? Yeah. Okay. And I've got your invitations here. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you. And we've been hosting this event since 1904. The Yacht Club's been part of our community since 1884. So thank you for your time, and please do come and support the boaters. Thank you very much. You just sent, uh, deliver them over here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, Esther, followed by Jerry Durker. I don't know if you can see this here. Maybe Jerry might help you or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. I'm Esther Cronenberg. I live in uh, off of Cooper Point Road near, in Green Cove Basin Watershed. And I'm here to talk about the Green Cove <coughs> Park Project. That's a development that's proposed on Cooper Point Road in the right on the border of Thurston County and the urban growth area of City of Olympia. And it proposes that 101, 181 houses be built on top of an old gravel mine that was also used as a landfill, a wirehouser, export log yard, and a toxic waste dump. The suspected toxic waste, besides from people who dump their own trash, is from the Port of Olympia and other West Bay industrial sites, some of which predate environmental laws. It likely contains very high levels of dioxins and petroleum from wood treatment wastes. It's our understanding this material was never cleaned up but only buried. Residents' reports and photos of suspect wastes have been corroborated with DNR inspections and field investigations, lending credibility to their reports and meriting substantial additional investigation. The phase one environmental review of this project appears seriously deficient. It doesn't consider EPA or Department of Natural Resource reports. Proper procedures were not followed by the developer or the City of Olympia. A public disclosure request from DNR revealed years of violations of state law and illegal dumping that were never addressed and never enforced. There is evidence from several credible sources. Residents repeatedly complained about waste being dumped and have pictures to prove it. Test pits corroborate the <coughs> residents' observations. DNR's own inspectors reported the waste in violation of DNR regulations year after year. And aerial photos repeatedly show waste dump on neighbors' properties and beyond the permitted mine permit limits. Based on the developer's own geotechnical review of the test pits, estimates show there could be as much as 325,000 tons of buried waste. The sensible approach is to require additional investigation. The investigations paid for by the developer give the impression the site has been investigated, though they merely skimmed the surface of a large body of fill material. The Department of Ecology has apparently come to the conclusion only innocuous construction debris is in the backfill. This appears to be an erroneous conclusion. Appropriate sampling has never been done for groundwater, surface water, and sediment, leading to off-site sensitive receptors. There are also concerns about the effects of the stormwater runoff from this site beyond the city boundaries into the county. The city and county adapted the Green Cove Basin Comprehensive Plan in 1998. 
It states the top priority that emerged during the planning process was reducing future stormwater runoff to Green Cove Creek in recognition of the serious impacts it would cause, in including flooding, destabilizing, destabilizing the stream channel, and threatening pre-listed endangered salmon habitat. There, there's a, three salmon runs that go up Green Cove Creek, the shellfish and the mud minnow. And it's also a critical recharge area in the Green Cove Comprehensive Plan. So the water that goes down there goes into the aquifer for the city of Olympia and everybody out on Cooper Point and into Bud Inlet and into Elb Inlet. So we're asking that the county ask DNR and uh, Department of Ecology to do further investigation and to do reclamation on the site, which has never been done. Thanks. Thank you, Esther. After Jerry is uh, Pedro Lewin. Thank you. Uh, Esther, do you want to leave your- I got it. I'll, I'll, I'll get it for- uh, I'm gonna oh, oh, point oh, at a couple things here too. Uh, <laughs> My name is Jerry Durker. I live at 17, uh, pardon me, 2826 Cooper Point Road, Northwest, Olympia, Washington, 98502. Sorry, I've lived too many places around here. <laughs> um, uh, I'm also speaking about the, the same site and stuff. As you notice on, uh, on the thing down there, there are. See these little areas here? There would normally be. Leave it there because the camera be zoomed in on it already. Yeah. Thank you. No, normally there would be three of those, uh, three to four of those across the whole site. Uh, they actually exist on uh, uh, as canyons on either end of, on either end of the site, uh, on other people's property. Uh, uh, Mr. David Gillingham owns one of them. Uh, he has a canyon that ends at a wall, 30 feet tall, uh, right at the site of this. Uh, part of the things that I forgot to mention here when I was here uh, with the, the large photo here a couple of weeks ago, was that uh, they had pierced the perched aquifers in a number of places over there over the, uh, over the last 30 years or more, uh, possibly even before that. Uh, that created, that took, and the, the different aquifer layers here, at least two, uh, one to two of them have been pierced from the top <coughs> down and is, and they're dumping contaminated stormwater down into the lower aquifers, which is the aquifers that, that for Allison Springs and the wells that the city of Olympia and all the wells on, on Cooper Point have. This is a very serious problem here. Uh, and, uh, and one of the things is, is that, like she mentioned, uh, there, there has been no cleanup. There's 25 feet to 30 feet of stuff in various different places on that site, between the canyons and the old, uh, the old places where they dug up. Uh, and dug all the way down to the, the blue-gray earthenware clay and filled it all back up and then put a little bit of gravel on the top <laughs> and made it look pretty. Uh, but it doesn't really look that pretty if you've ever been up there. Uh, the, this, just the fumes coming off that site, uh, as I, I mentioned uh, uh, a couple of years ago, when I was out there, I took one breath and it was enough to burn the whole inside of my throat and stuff like that. So. There are, there are things out there that are really nasty and stuff, and we ne really need to remove that. That's why we're asking the, the county, as well as the city and everyone else, to have DNR make them do the actual reclamation and remove all non-native material off that site as it's required by the reclamation permit for DNR. DNR has allowed them to continue operations uh, from the 11.4 acre site that, that the county had permitted back in 1972 that actually, <laughs> if you notice that 1972 uh, 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 aerial photo there, that you guys didn't get, uh, the county didn't get that until 1978. You didn't know that it had already been mined out much farther than that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Do you want to leave that there now? You want to take, thank, thank you, sir. Uh, Petra Lewin, followed by Robert Brown. Okay. He, he's in, in your stead? Yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Well, as, I shouldn't have put his name first. Okay, thank you. Did I pronounce your name right? Did I pronounce your name properly, though, Petra? My name's Robert A. Brown, Jr. Okay. <laughs> I live at 9145 nine, Prather Road. May I approach, uh, approach you all? I'm oh, sorry? No, oh, no, no, over sure. here, sir. Over here, thank you. Uh, Mr. Benzer, you have a copy of these. Thank you. 
I do. Okay. Go back to the mic so everybody can hear you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, brought to my attention that, that I ought to get to be doing something, but uh, we we were put into long-term agriculture. Uh, we were zoned, trained, uh, zoned into that, and uh, it wasn't done properly. And uh, the county attorney told us to wait till the, sh the time changed, tide changes, and things happen different because he couldn't change it. What started it all was um, we came in for a um, address for two places on our property, and Scott. Play, uh, Scott Clark told me no, he wouldn't give them to me. So I went to our commissioner, and he, he said, I'll be right back. He came back with the addresses for us. Um, and from that point on, um, Scott Clark lied to us. And he sent us to a committee, um, commissioner's meeting that was supposed to be just a meeting and workshop. They happened to be voting on our property and put us into LTA with a picture, aerial picture we gave him that he said would guarantee we wouldn't be in LTA. He put it up on the wall and they voted us into it. We objected and we were, we were nice enough to let us have time to rebut it, which we did. And so went back to Scott Clark because he was the director and he said if we had uh, the community put up a, signed a notice saying that they didn't want us in LTA, it would get us out. So we did, we got 76 names, 75 said they didn't want us in LTA. So we go to the next meeting, he says that they don't count. The people had to show up, well, he didn't tell us that. <laughs> so we go to get, uh, we finally decided to do it ourselves, we look it up and we get a soils examination, a whole shot on, on soils to see if uh, through wetlands or whatever, it would take us out of LTA, which it did. And then we went into the commissioner's advisory committee. He didn't show up with the documents. I had extra ones made and I gave it to him and they said that we should be out of LTA. Scott Clark went back to the commission and told him that we should stay in LTA. <clears throat> um, so there we sat. So finally uh, at the end, I went to the uh, I went to the governor. I said, "Hey, now what do we do?" She said, "There's nothing we can do because you you all are voted in, and that's the way it is." But go to the Congress. So we went to the Congress lady. She asked me if uh, she, I would mind having the commissioners and us in a meeting in her office. I said, "Please do it." You know, she says she can't tell them what to do. I know that. But bottom line is, they can keep money from the county. You know, there's ways to do things. And everything Scott Clark, and I think it was all because his pride got hurt. I don't know what our commissioner said to him, and uh, whatever, and then he got caught when he said it was a regular meeting for the commissioners, and yet it was a thing he voted on. Mr. And Brown, are you nearly done? Okay, your yeah, time is up, sir. <laughs> so I just gave those to you, so you would have it. Mr. Mencer has it. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Petra? <laughs> Petra, are you coming up, ma'am? Yep. Thank you. So I'm uh, Petra oh. Bowen. I live at 9145 Prather Road, Centralia. It is Thurston County. It's on the very edge of Thurston County. Um, to go on with the story, when, when they explained to us that if the soil test didn't come back, uh, favorable for the LTA that uh, we would be taken out of that jurisdiction. In fact, the uh, money that we spent and having a uh, wetlands evaluation indicated that we were uh, over 50% in uh, wetlands or non-suitable agricultural soils. The uh, commission or Scott Clark, I believe, sent the report to somebody in Spokane which reevaluated the soils and indicated that they thought that it was part of the property was uh, should stay in LTA and part of it should not. Then, as a result of various meetings, and this all occurred in 2012, although the notice that we had received was in 2008, and because of the government uh, shutdowns and, and lack of funds, we were unable to present all this information until 2012. 
Yes, and then we went to see Bud uh, subsequently, uh, who was our commissioner, who indicated that if the winds changed and he had a little more jurisdiction that possibly we could do something about it. Now we are here again. Um, in between that, I went to see FutureWise, who apparently had filed lawsuit against Thurston County and was one of the reasons why there was this land grab. What part of the law says that there should be no taking without just compensation. Uh, FutureWise agreed with me on that, although they were <laughs> slightly hostile. But, um, and when I've talked to the assessor and the treasurer downstairs, I've asked whether or not there has been any compensation for the taking of property rights. And they indicated there have been, although I don't know who has <coughs> received those, that compensation. In any case, all that being said, we're, because of some medical problems and um, other issues, we are back again to present our case and hopefully <coughs> resolve some of what we feel legal ramifications were not followed. Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess one other aspect was is that when all this was going on in 2012, uh, the county attorney had indicated that he thought that um, there were some serious wrongs that had occurred and was apologetic to us for what good that did us. Anyway, that's why we're here, and we have reiterated uh, all the paperwork that was submitted at the time for hopefully a different commission review. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Josh, would you mind checking? Is there anybody else that signed up? Okay. Nobody else has signed up, but I'm going to offer it up to the gallery. If is anybody would like to address the commission, now's the time. All right, yes, sir. Come on up, state your name, please, and uh, address for the record. Hello, I'm Scott Bannister from Yelm, 15720 92nd Court. I just, uh, following up on, I've been having meetings with all of you individually, which I probably should have done that in the very beginning um, when I presented my Second Amendment preservation ordinance. Or I'm, I'm going to continue and hopefully we can have a work session on this or hopefully you can vote on this because it's it's really important that you uphold your oaths and our oath is looking out for the people and our people's rights are just being violated by our elected officials not you our attorney general and we have a petition that we're going to go after him for the criminal acts that he is committing. And uh, I'm going to Yelm again tonight. I've presented that same ordinance to the city of Yelm. Uh, hopefully we can get some votes and get our elected officials to uphold their oaths. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Anybody else that want to address the uh, commission? All right, thank you. We're moving on then, thank you. <clears throat> That brings us to agenda, agenda item number two, county manager's update. Romero? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, commissioners. I'd like to follow up with a uh, um, couple of uh, public testimonies we received in past meetings. Let me begin um, with the uh, public testimony you received on March 26, 2019 um, from uh, Mr. Doug Carmen. He is the chair of the uh, Lone Lake um, Lake Management District, LMD. Um, the details of, of his letter um, was discussed this morning before you, and Mr. Carmen was in attendance. Um, I don't want to get to all the details of that discussion, so, um, but uh, Mr. Carmen was uh, in attendance, so the next step will be um, for me to draft a formal response to his letter and, uh, and we will uh, mail that to him uh, as soon as feasible. So I just want to make sure that um, the public knows that you have discussed that request from Mr. Carmen. Also, you received um, last week uh, a public testimony from Ms. Uh, Michelle Harkins, and this is related to um, a, uh, a biosolids application um, uh, on the Yelm area. Her request was to uh, 
you to consider, uh, as I stated, quote unquote, uh, the board has the authority under the Growth Management Act to amend the docket in order to start uh, processing and revising the docket. Uh, Here, recommendation was for you to consider amending Title 24. And Title 24 of the Thurston County Code outlines a simple line that, uh, related to biosolids that we need to engage with the Department of Ecology um, on our memorandum of understanding. I briefly um, um, mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, but I'm going to reiterate this matter. You already have um, uh, uh, heard the details of the staff's perspective, and there's two elements. Yes, in fact, you do have the authority to uh, amend the docket on a yearly basis, which you do, um, both on the development code docket as well as the um, comprehensive uh, plan docket. And the docket, what it means is, is, uh, is the work plan that you approve for staff to go ahead and start performing those duties on the upcoming <coughs> year. So, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Horkins is correct, you have the authority. However, under state law, uh, biosolids applications are, are reviewed and permitted by the Department of Ecology. It's not permitted by the county. And, uh, and so adding to the docket at this point, perhaps it's going to be a fruitless exercise since there is not going to be uh, the authority for you to govern uh, the uh, applications related to a biosolid uh, project. So, but you do have taken a, a, a proactive action related to um, this particular uh, application in this, appli uh, this particular project. And this is located at the 19724 um, 128th Avenue Southeast in Yelm. Some of the proactive approaches that you have taken um, back in February 13, 2018, you as a, as a Board of Health sent uh, a request, uh, a letter to the Department of Ecology asking um, DOE to review this application because from your perspective, uh, this application didn't meet the standards to assess all the potential environmental impacts to this project. Also on the same date, the staff from the Department of Health and Social Services provided a lengthy response to uh, DOE, that would be Mr. Peter Lyon, who was overseeing this project, outlining some of the, perhaps some of the technical gaps on this application as well. Further, uh, last week, uh, you sent a letter uh, to uh, Mr. Brad Thompson. He is the regional director for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. And in so many words on this letter, you submitted those copies of the letters that I just mentioned to you, submitted to DOE, and also urging um, the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife to take a proactive approach uh, to uh, look into this particular permit, because from our perspective, um, it could have potential uh, uh, impacts to the environment, both on the on the threatened and endangered species, such as the Chinook, Chinook uh, salmon, and the squalid steelhead, and the Masama pocket gopher, due to the proximity of the Nisqually River, and also due to the impact on the groundwater feeding uh, the Nisqually River. So, um, although the, perhaps you know there may not be an avenue uh, as to how we the county <coughs> can permit uh, biosolid uh, permits in the future. Uh, certainly, uh, the board, uh, you as Board of Health, as well as Board of County Commissioners and County staff has taken a proactive action to make sure that all the environmental studies are completed before this project can move forward. That is in response to the letter from uh, Ms. Harkins they submitted last week. And the, uh, the next uh, letter that you, I was submitted to you uh, via public testimony as well was from uh, Mr. Uh, Michael Stedman. And he's serving, he's a, a council member for the city of Lacey, and he's serving as the chair of the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. In his testimony, he highlighted a couple of issues related to the request for proposals. The county is moving forward in securing the services for the long-term services for uh, the solid waste activities. And, um, and, and I think that's probably the gist of his uh, comment in here. 
So as a result of that testimony, I attended uh, uh, last week's Solid Waste Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, at least from my point of view, I think it was a fruitful conversation. Um, the members appreciated me going and having a conversation as to how we appreciate the county's uh, input from this Solid Waste Advisory Committee and also how we're going to find a way as to how we make, uh, we provide their support for the Solid Waste Advisory Committee to be successful in the future. So I'd just like to wrap um, those up in terms of the public testimony that you received in the last two weeks. Very nice. Any questions? Okay. Madam Manager? Just to, um, on the biosolid issue, uh -huh. um, a nuance I think that's, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, the legal rubric around the biosolids allows the Department of Ecology to, to delegate or grant us some input, but they've chosen not to do that. Uh, thank you. Within the, the RCW and the WACs particularly, uh, it states the, the responsibilities of the Department of Ecology to permit those, uh, those projects and also give the ability perhaps to delegate those uh, permits to the county or local jurisdictions. Um, and we did uh, reach out to the Department of Ecology related to this particular matter, and that will be the gist of the potential memor memorandum of understandings. And the initial response from uh, DOE was they perhaps was they were not interested in delegating that authority to the counties. So thank you. So if you'd like more local control yeah. over these types of issues, there's a potentially pressure to be exerted. Right. And not to say that perhaps um, uh, uh, you as a commission may see this as an opportunity for the 2020 legislative <coughs> session to add this to your legislative agenda as to how uh, the biosolid permitting process can give it more control to local jurisdictions. Because at the end of the day, we, the local jurisdictions, are the ones who have to deal with the consequences or not of this particular operation. Thank you very much for bringing that point up. They just denied it. Yeah. Commissioner Edwards? No, nope, good okay. to go. Is that it? Yeah, and uh, uh, lastly, let me uh, give you, uh, for the public some of the key meetings that you had last week. On Tuesday, April uh, the 2nd, you held a public hearing uh, related to a potential uh, creation of the special use district on Summit Lake. Uh, you uh, received quite a few uh, verbal and written testimony uh, on April 25th. Third, during your agenda setting, I will bring this item uh, for you to discuss and determine what the next steps you would like to take on this uh, project. As a matter of clarification, um, this is a request for, uh, for the commissioners to allow to continue the process of the creation of the special use district. At this point, it is not up to the border county commissions to create the district. Um, it's the borders the individuals involved within this district who have to determine their future as to how they want to create the district or not. Also on uh, Wednesday, April... Before you, before you move on from that one, also this was a citizen or residence initiated yes. activity, not anything by the county. Yeah, and, uh, and the state law related to, you know, uh, the creation of uh, a special use district is very prescriptive. They have to meet a minimum uh, uh, that require petition signatures, and I believe they met that minimum required. They submitted uh, 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 an application fee, which uh, we're running out of money on that application fee process in this process. Then you hold a public hearing for the public to give you their public testimony whether you consider to for the process to move forward <clears throat> into an election. And that's really perhaps the decision point that you may consider uh, on April 23rd. And the staff is gonna bring a synopsis of all the comments that we have received, and then you will have the opportunity to discuss among yourselves the next steps. Um, on Wednesday, April the 3rd, you heard in the morning uh, uh, the visual initial briefing of the Comprehensive Plan Amendment Code docket. And also on that day, you had the opportunity to welcome new employees to county government. On Thursday, April 4th, um, uh, only Commissioner Minster attended the Jail Population Crisis Action Team meeting. I think it was a great meeting to the extent the Jail Population Crisis Action Team will be renamed to Jail Resource Team. Hmm. And, um, and, and we'll, I will schedule a meeting um, in the next couple, three months. That's all I have for you. All right, thank you, sir. Um, 
moves us to agenda item number three on the calendar, or on the uh, agenda, and that's uh, consent items A through F. Is there a motion? Uh, yes, I would move that we accept and, uh, and approve consent items A through F. Second. Any discussion on those? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, aye. Yeah, motion carries, thank you. Agenda item number four, department items, public health social services, approval of department of DSHSS, uh, and agreement for respite care. Margaret, welcome. Good afternoon. Am I at the right level? Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. I'm Margaret Huff with Thurston County Public Health and Social Services. I manage the Specialized Recreation Program. And I know I've been before you before, but I'll give a recap. Our program is uh, specially designed to meet the unique needs of adults with developmental disabilities. Many of these folks uh, have nowhere else to go for their leisure time and choose to come and spend their time with us. And specifically today, I'm here to request the uh, authorization for our director to sign a program agreement with Developmental Disabilities Administration at the state to continue our respite in the community settings <coughs> contract. What that means is many of our clients live with family members who provide round-the-clock care for our clients. The only time they get a rest is when they come and participate in our activities. So we hold a contract with the state. We bill the state for reimbursement for our program fees. So this contract does not have any money tied to it. It's a strictly reimbursable contract. And without this contract in place, roughly half of our clients wouldn't be able to come to the programs. So we, we look forward to this continued agreement with the state. Okay, any comments, no. questions, no. anything? Uh, no, and I might point out that uh, oftentimes when we don't have questions, it's probably because we discussed it at an earlier work session as we did in this matter. Thank you. And again, this is state funded through DSHS? That is correct. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Is there a motion? Yes, I would move to approve the January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2020 county program agreement between Thurston County and the Washington State Department of Social and Health Services to provide community settings, uh, respite care services to adults with developmental disabilities and authorize the Director of Public Health and Social Services to sign the contract. Second. That's moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Very much. much. Agenda item number five, public works. Uh, resolution calling for sealed bids. Matt Unzelman is in the house. Good afternoon, Board of County Commissioners. Can you move that up? Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Mike. Uh, public works is <clears throat> requesting permission today from the Board of County Commissioners to advertise a project for the Olympic View Elementary Safe Route to Schools project. The Olympic View Elementary School is in the North Thurston School District. It's located between I-5 and Martin Way. Um, I guess a good way of describing where it's at, it's behind the Winco or behind the Walmart area. Um, some of the project improvements include the installation of the traffic calming devices, such as speed humps and raised intersections, as well as improving all the ADA ramps throughout the neighborhood that kids and others with uh, disabilities use. Project improvements were planned based upon several community, uh, community meetings with local residents as well as communications with the school. Um, this was a joint effort between Thurston County Public Works staff and also the health department. The estimated construction cost is $600,000 which is entirely coming from state and federal funding. If the Board of County Commissioners um, allows us to proceed with advertisement today, we can get this project out in time so that we can actually do this work while school's out this summer, which is a big deal for the school and the local community. And it's a safe route. <laughs> exactly. All right. Any questions or comments? Um, is there any reason why Olympic, I mean, why Olympic View School? Is there any reason why that school was picked? Uh, the best way to describe it is for anybody who's been out there, when parents are dropping kids off or uh, kids are getting out of school. Um, I don't know if chaos is a good technical <laughs> term to use, but <laughs> it's, um, it's very busy. So there was a good need there at that school. Yeah, and so what we do is with the Safe Route Schools program is we evaluate 
Get closer to the mic, would you? Thank you. We each, every two, three years, we evaluate a different school. Last, last, was it last year or the year before, we did Lydia Hawk Elementary School. Um, and now that I know that we're looking uh, in upcoming years for the Meadows School. So we just look around the local school districts and see where that need is. Thank you. Anything? No, I might just comment the need is there because kids are 30% of our population, but 100% of our future, and we want to make sure we look out for them. That's right. All right. Uh, is there a motion? Yes. I would move to approve the resolution calling for sealed bids and authorize the county engineer to set the bid date and time for receipt and opening of said bids for the construction of the Olympic View Elementary Safe Routes to School project. And that's uh, CP number 61506. Upon receipt of authorization from the Washington State Department of Transportation to use state and federal funding for construction. Second. Move to second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Thank you, Matt, very much. Thank you for your time. Uh, uh, 5B is against sealed bids for a different project, and I have Vasil Barota. Please come up, Vasil. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Can you move that uh, mic down? Move it down for yeah, me. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Public Works is requesting permission from the board uh, to advertise a call for sealed bids for supplying uh, asphalt materials for the road operations uh, division of Public Works. Uh, these materials uh, will be used for the annual road maintenance activities and the purpose of this bid is to secure the best uh, unit cost for each type of material. And uh, the purchase of asphalt materials is part of the uh, public works budget and um, our maintenance work aligns with the initiative eight of the county's uh, strategic plan. Any questions? Questions? No. Questions, comments? No, sir. I All think right. he's covered it. Go right ahead. I would move to approve the resolution and call for sealed bids for furnishing a supply of various kinds of asphalt materials to the Department of Public Works for annual road maintenance activities. <coughs> Second. Been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 That carries. Thank you, Vasil. Now you're here again for the next one, another sealed bid. Yes, and uh, this is a, another annual uh, program, is the 2019 overlay program, and uh, we are requesting permission to go to advertise for a call for seal bids for a contract. And the project includes uh, grinding and paving about uh, 3.1 lane miles, and uh, we have a one segment of Bald Hill Road southeast uh, from uh, Yelm city limits to Vail, uh, Vail Road uh, intersection. And then another segment of Vail Road that's uh, north of uh, 138 Avenue and just north of Rocking Lane. And uh, the estimated, estimated cost is $600,000 and <coughs> will be paid uh, from the county road fund. And also this project is part of the 2019 public works budget and the transportation improvement plan, the county facility, uh, the county capital facility plan, and then also aligns again with the initiative eight of the county strategic plan. Any questions? Questions? No. No okay. questions. Okay, hey, go ahead. I would move to approve the resolution and call for sealed bids for the 2019 mm -hmm. overlay program. And that's uh, CRP 98219. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. Nope. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries as well. Vasil, you're on a roll. Go ahead. Yeah. The last one. Public Works also is requesting permission uh, to advertise a call for seal bids for a contract for the 2019 chip seal program. And for this project, we apply a surface treatment, so-called chip seal treatment, 
on some roads in northwest quadrant of the county. The total uh, lane miles is about 75 lane miles. That it's about 37 center line miles. And um, the estimated construction cost is $1.8 million and also we'll be using the county road fund for uh, this expense. Okay. As usually the project will, all the projects are advertised in the Olympian, the Seattle uh, Daily Journal of Commerce and then also we post online on Builders Exchange website. <coughs> And um, this project also is in the 2019 Public Works budget and uh, transportation improvement plan, and then also aligns with the initiative eight of the county's strategic plan, which is support robust and well-maintained infrastructure systems for a thriving community. Any questions? Questions? No. <coughs> All right, go ahead. I would move to approve the resolution calling for sealed bids and authorize the county engineer to set the bid date and time <coughs> for receipt and opening of said bids for the construction. Uh, we're in the wrong item. Excuse me, I'm, is, is I think I jumped ahead. Yeah. Okay, we're going to make a shorter motion. Yeah. <coughs> I would move to approve the resolution and call for sealed <coughs> bids for the 2019 chip seal program. CRP 98019. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. I was, trying and, to get, uh, I was trying to hurry Steve up on this deal. Mm -hmm. Cecile, I should have introduced you as associate uh, city um, engineer. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Thanks, sir. Yes, yeah, civilian. Next is 5E resolution for sealed bid for the <clears throat> Tabatin Creek culvert replacement project. We have civil engineer Steve Johnson. Yes, good afternoon. I am Steve Johnson with Thurston County Public Works uh, here regarding our Tabatin Creek uh, culvert replacement project. In the 2019-2020 uh, Thurston County uh, Public Works biennium budget includes $4 million allocation from the second quarter percent real estate excise tax, that's rate two, to fund removal of fish passage barriers under county roads. Public Works reviewed the inventory of culverts and we prioritized barrier removals for consideration. Our prioritization process considers the barrier type, whether it's a full barrier or partial barrier, uh, the presence of anadromous salmon, potential habitat gains, constructability, as well as cost. One of the culverts that we prioritized under this, uh, under this year uh, was for the <coughs> culvert under Pisoner Road at Tabatin Creek, which is a tributary of the Nisqually River. <coughs> I think it's worth noting that we did receive some uh, additional contributing design fund grants from the Nisqually tribe directly, as well as from South Puget Sound Salmon Enhancement Group, which was also uh, sourced from the Nisqually tribe. That helped to uh, fund some of the design on this project. The project will replace the existing uh, culvert crossing with, uh, with a new 16 uh, foot, eight inch aluminum box culvert, and then reconstructing a portion of the stream channel within uh, the existing right of way uh, and uh, some signed construction easements just outside right of way. The estimated $650,000 construction cost will be paid from the REIT 2 funds allocated for the Fish Passage Enhancement Program in 2019. This project is in the current budget, uh, as well as the Capital Facilities Plan, and is in alignment with the County's Strategic Plan uh, Initiative 8. Do you have any questions? Any questions on this one or, or comments? Um, this is the first culvert passage project to come since I've gotten on the board. Yes. Um, is this the 650000 Is that... An, is that a typical amount that it costs? Is that on the cheap end or there's a, there's <laughs> a very wide expensive? range. Yes, for, for projects about this size, which is gonna be a very large culvert and not a, not a very deep uh, fill, this is in, in the mid range, okay. in the mid range. Now, if we were doing a large bridge, it would be more expensive and uh, we hope to do some larger projects next year, as well as a, a good balance of smaller projects as well. Perfect. Um, but yes, this is mid range for, for projects of this scope. I was just trying to kind of get a sense of how many we can do for $4 million, so that gives me a clue. It's, it's less than we wish, <laughs> yeah. um, but the, we, we try to prioritize so we get the best overall benefit. Thank you. Have you seen 100 point yet? 100 with, point culvert? Not with my eyes, just on the video. On oh, the video, yeah. it's amazing. And that was what, one point? That was 1.3 total Three. project cost. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Perfect. Any comments or questions? Well, I might mention, I think that uh, uh, through Steve working on this and, and working with other entities involved, that because we are ahead of others in uh, and uh, really leading the state All in others, uh, yeah. covert replacement, we've been able to leverage some of our money to get some more money to do more. Yeah. And it, thank you correct. very much, Steve, for what you're doing. I think I jumped ahead because I like to keep us ahead on this deal. So. That's good. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this uh, uh, County manager. Okay. No, go ahead. So if I may add, um, you talk about the Hunter Point uh, project <laughs> that it was uh, 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 a great successful project that it opened up last year on April 25th, uh, 2019, in a couple of weeks. Uh, Public Works uh, uh, is going to be receiving an award from the State American Public Works Association for a very successful and innovative project. So uh, that will be uh, log uh, that will be given at their uh, spring conference. It's going to be located on, at the um, convention center in Tacoma, Washington. So public works staff will be present, as well as Commissioner Hutchins, as the chair of the board, and myself. If anything, I'd like to um, send some uh, congratulations to the staff for the job well done, and also an appreciation from uh, to the board for uh, making this a uh, commitment <coughs> and a priority uh, as to how we need to resolve uh, fish barriers in the county. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> this is one of the things I just, it just absolutely, I, I get so much joy out of this stuff. This is so meaningful uh, to so many people and to the environment. I love it. Absolutely. Thank you, Steve, very much. Is there a, oh, did you already say it or not? No, I didn't, but I will. Okay, read the motion, please. Thank you. <laughs> I move to approve the resolution calling for sealed bids and authorize the county engineer to set the bid date and time for receipt and opening of said bids for the construction of the Tabatin Creek Culvert Replacement Project. And that's CP number 61492. Second. And moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you aye. So much. That motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve, very much. Uh, takes us to item number six, commissioners and county managers items. Ramiro? Uh, thank you, commissioners. Um, this particular uh, item, which is related to the appointment uh, of a new member to the planning commission on the, for district one, uh, this is usually done on a consent agenda, uh, but I believe the commissioners would like to have a discussion uh, related to this particular uh, appointment. The proposal before you is to appoint Mr. Don Dehan to the Thurston County Planning Commission for District 1 again to fill the vacant position beginning upon appointment until December 31st, 2021. Um, you discussed this uh, appointment a couple of uh, weeks ago, and uh, as I recall, the conversation was not necessarily related to the ability or the knowledge that Mr. Deham or the contributions that he can bring uh, to the Planning Commission. It was more about um, perhaps the availability that he may have in serving uh, the commission, uh, the planning commission, since uh, he uh, spends his winter months, I believe, down in Arizona. Um, I think that was part of the conversation. And again, um, I'd just like to bring to um, your discussion uh, this particular. Okay, I can I pipe up. I was the one that I had uh, no disrespect to Mr. Dehan. He had an extremely impressive career um, all out of county. and. Um, had only recently moved to Thurston County and doesn't spend the whole year in Thurston County. There are a number of commissions that I would have, or advisory boards I would have been perfectly fine, but the planning commission in particular, in my opinion, I was concerned about not having a long period of time living in Thurston County and availability. So based on those two considerations and those alone, I, I'm opposing this uh, appointment. Any comments? I guess uh, I would like to point out that uh, uh, Mr. Dehan had his career in uh, King County, and that was uh, both in municipal government. He was the mayor of uh, Federal Way, I think it was, and a longtime Boeing executive. And now he has a bunch of grandchildren that live in Thurston County. He's been here about five years now, and I think that 
as a grandparent myself, there is no better reason to commit yourself to your community than having grandkids that uh, you're going to help plan for their, for their future. And uh, because of that and his uh, excellent qualifications, I'm very much in favor of Mr. Dehan being uh, appointed to this posi particular position on the Planning Commission. Um, well, I'll tell you, I agree. Uh, and, and when I spoke with him about a week and a half, two weeks, two weeks ago, uh, he told me over the phone he's making a commitment to attend meetings and fly back as needed uh, for the three months or so that he's out. Uh, but then when I, when I hear more uh, or I learn more about how often he might be needed, I want to be ensured that he's not impeding the Planning Commission by not being able to come back every two weeks if that's needed or I'm not sure what his commitment or level of commitment would be expected at this point now. Uh, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt uh, that he will uh, commit to the Planning Commission because I don't want to lead, I don't want them to be stymied by not having all the information possible before, a couple weeks before they make a decision or having benefit of all the discussion of the planners on the Planning Commission of the uh, technical issues. Um, so it will take his return and Dr. Nation to find out whether he's going to be able to make that level of commitment. But this time, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt and appoint him. So. OK. I would move to appoint Don Dehan to the Thurston County Planning Commission for District 1 to fill a vacant position beginning upon appointment until December 31st, 2021. Uh, I'll second that. Any discussion? Any further discussion? No. Okay. All in favor of uh, in favor of appointing Don DeHan to the County Planning Commission say aye. 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 Any negative or nay? Nay. Okay. That motion carries. <clears throat> Six B approval of the Board of County Commissioner work segment summaries, work session summaries for 2018. Um, uh, thank you, Commissioners. This again one of those items that you approve on your consent agenda. But I just want to make sure that I bring this to a formal vote since the minutes that you're considering approving are in 2018. And obviously, Commissioner Minster was not um, in his uh, uh, current uh, position at that time. Okay. Okay, so this is a. Go ahead. I guess this is a formality yeah. going back to last year, uh, a cleanup, if you will. Okay. I would move to approve the Board of County Commissioners work session summaries for July 23rd, 2018, July 24th, 2018, November 7th, 2018, and November 16th, 2018. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Uh, 6C is the Commissioner's uh, reports from last week. Uh, go ahead, Ty, Yeah, I'm sure you do. Uh, yeah, just briefly, uh, on April 2nd, we had our um, equity pay day proclamation, and I attended a evening, uh, <clears throat> evening on pay equity event at the Women's Club downtown, and there were speakers, and uh, they were, I kind of alerted them to what we had done, and we got an I got another chance to sort of highlight our proclamation and our um, commitment that we expressed uh, at our meeting that afternoon, so that was good. I uh, attended the uh, Inner City Transit Walk and Roll Youth Education Center ribbon cutting. So I'm on the board of Inner City Transit and they have a really cool new facility right across the street from the Olympia Transit Center where they're going to have bike repair classes and uh, all sorts of things uh, going on. Uh, it's connected to walk and roll, which your school kids might hear about, but it really is it's way broader than that in terms of the education programs and youth outreach and multimodal transportation programs that they're going to be having there. And on Sunday, I took the day to visit some county park locations, um, including Deschutes Falls and Fry Cove, places that I hadn't seen with my own eyes, and I really wanted to get a sense of our county park system. Um, we're really struggling with staff and funding, so I wanted to get a sense of, of these places, and it was a great day, and I enjoyed myself, and I have some ideas for the future. Commissioner Edwards. No, sir. I'm not going to give a report. <coughs> I'll have an opportunity later. Thank you. Uh, I only have two items. Uh, there was a whole bunch I wanted to do, but was out ill. Uh, attended a ribbon cutting 
out uh, 3400 uh, Mottman. I don't know if you remember that building. That we I remember. County that. stoned that, and we sold it, and uh, went to a ribbon cutting for armor storage. Uh, it's, a, it's a large storage facility, and they're already exceeding their expectations for capacity. Not for capacity, but for filling it. Uh, but it's a beautiful facility. I was attended by uh, the Chamber of Commerce as well, and ambassadors. And uh, I sat in as uh, Commissioner Edwards um, alternate for the TCOM Administrative Board meeting for last, uh, well, for, for the month, but also we recapped some stuff from last year. And uh, that's all I attended last week. That's it for my report. County Manager. Uh, uh, thank you, Commissioners. Let me walk you through your upcoming schedule for this upcoming week. The appointments included in this report will be those appointments that at least two commissioners will be present. Uh, you may have individual appointments on your individual calendars. Those will not be part of my report. Beginning here, well, at 3 o'clock, uh, you have uh, two public hearings. One, you will hear public testimony related to proposed changes on the precinct boundaries, and that will be a presentation by the auditor's office. Uh, following to that public hearing, you will uh, hear public testimony related to proposed changes to Thurston County Code Title VI related to ambulance ordinance. In uh, 3.30 in the afternoon today, you will hold your regular Board of Health meeting. And at 6.30 this evening, you have an opportunity to connect with the Planning Commission um, over dinner. That's the annual event in which you have the opportunity to connect with uh, the Planning Commission again. Wednesday, April 10th, at noon, you have your uh, monthly lunch meeting with your appointed directors. At one in the afternoon, you will have a briefing related to a hospital emergency room uh, <coughs> diversion. At uh, two in the afternoon, you will have an executive session related to a, a, a litigation against between Doe and Thurston County. At 2.30, you will have a, uh, a briefing related to the tobacco and vapor product prevention. Um, and that would be a uh, potential policy you may consider related to that topic. Thursday, April, April 11th, you will hear from the uh, public works as to the state of their affairs at 9 in the morning. At 10, uh, you will have your commissioner's check-in, which uh, an agenda has already been posted. And at 1 in the afternoon, you have your monthly Superior Court update with the uh, presiding judge of Superior Court. April 12th at 8.45, you will convene in this room to conduct interviews uh, for the Human Resources Director position. And at noon, you will convene in an executive session to have a discussion uh, on the responses that you receive from, as a result of the interviews. Uh, nothing on Monday, April 15, and we'll come back here on Tuesday, April 16, where you'll be reviewing the agenda uh, board meeting for that afternoon. That's all I have for you. All right. Any questions or comments to the county manager or staff? All right. Any other business to conduct? See mates? Nope. This meeting's adjourned. Now we're going to move right into the uh, public hearing. We'll move into the public hearing right now. <clears throat> for April the 9th, 2019, uh, this is to receive a public hearing to receive testimony regarding proposed 2019 election precincts uh, maintenance plan. The purpose of this is to give the opportunity for the public to provide any comments on the proposed 2019 election precinct maintenance plan reflecting annexations by the city of Tumwater and other miscellaneous changes. There's a sign-up sheet in the back, uh, in the back of the room, that you can add your name to if you wish to testify. You will have three minutes to testify. You're not allowed to donate your time to another party. Um, and uh, I will call your name forward for oral testimony. When you hear your name, please come forward. And uh, um, you'll see a timer up here that'll show three minutes in a couple in about a minute. It'll show three minutes. It'll time down as you begin. When you hear when it reaches zero and your time's up, you'll hear a beep, and that means you're finished. However, you'll be allowed to finish your statement if you have a not statement but sentence if you're mid sentence. Please silence your cell phones. And now the public hearing for the proposed 2019 election precinct maintenance plan is now open. And I'm going to call for uh, Auditor Mary Hall or staff to provide background information about the proposal, written comments submitted for public hearing, or <coughs> additional information requested by the board. Welcome, Auditor. 
Um, excuse me. I am trying to get the auditor's office PowerPoint up, but we're having problems with the computer. So I'll continue to work on it, but I wanted to let you all know that um, okay. technical difficulties. Thank you. But of course. <laughs> Murphy's Law. Is this on? Yeah. Okay. You are. Um, so thank you for uh, hearing us today for these precinct maintenance changes. Um, we do this on an annual basis. Anytime that cities or towns annex property, we're required to adjust the precinct boundaries because you can't have precincts that uh, where a part of it is in the city and a part of it is in the county. That uh, is against state law. So um, this year we have some changes to the city of Olympia. We have uh, three precinct consolidations and six precinct boundary improvements. And then the city of Tumwater also had two annexations. So um, when annexations happen, we're also required to adjust the legal descriptions um, just to make sure that we comply with state law. Mm -hmm. So because commissioner boundaries are legal descriptions by precincts. So when you see the changes to your legal description, it doesn't mean that your districts have changed, just that the precincts on the border have changed. So we have a PowerPoint presentation that um, hopefully we can get up and see. Otherwise, uh, I think Tony, would you be able to do it without the PowerPoint? I could. I don't know how, how understandable it would be. Probably wouldn't be, yeah. Uh, do we have any kind of ETA or update on what this will take time-wise? Uh, just give us a minute, yeah. Okay. Is this, I understand the importance of it. Is it, that, is it vital, though, to the presentation, Mary? Um, I think that's for informational purposes, just to show you what we've done. Because anytime we have annexations, and you know, we also utilize it as an opportunity to clean up the boundaries, make them follow. Uh, you know, census tract blocks aren't always logical um, divisions. So when we have an opportunity to just make a precinct, say more square, for example, we use this as an opportunity. Is this so presentation on that, the website or on the other yes, webpage? Yes, the presentation is on our website. So if the public would like to see it, it's on thurstonvotes.org. And they can view it there. And you have the copy of the presentation in front of it, mm -hmm. uh, in front of you. Um, so we're moving, we have some moving here. Gary, uh, Commissioner Evers, you have something to add? I, I guess what I'd like to do is, uh, because we have discussed this on numerous occasions and had presentations from, from your staff or yourself at work sessions, uh, and as long as we have this available to the public, I, I don't know that they're going to get a lot more detail off of a screen that may or may not show up detail. at the citizen's home. I think we could just go ahead with it and then make sure, especially being you've uh, stated that this information and the visuals are available mm -hmm. on your website. Let's just go ahead and now uh, we've got a pretty good handle on what we're doing here anyway and not inconvenience the public anymore. How, Mary, how long has this been on the website? Okay. It's already posted? It's been on the website for 20 days. 20 days it's been posted already? Yes. Have you received any feedback? Voicemails, emails? Snail mail? We've not received any feedback, which is actually quite normal. Okay. Now I'm ready to proceed. Just, just kind of a technicality we're cleaning okay. up. Okay. Right. Do you have any other additional information that you or staff want to provide? Or does the board have any questions or comments? Please go ahead, Ty. I just had a question. I, I know we've gone over this, but and I, I understand the annexation part, and I understand the, um, the switching, the normalizing of boundaries. Mm -hmm. But where there's two that are merging, I think that's, there's three examples of that. What's that? I mean, why is there a merger? I mean, why when, was there two precincts? It's for cost savings. Um, anytime you have a precinct, you have to have a separate ballot type okay. for each precinct. So it eliminates, you know, one ballot type. So it's really for efficiencies. And typically, um, there may have been part of that precinct that was, uh, say, inside the city and now, or outside the city, and now it's inside the city. Do you want to add anything, Tony? Uh, yeah, typically, we'd like to see Get to the precincts. mic, Tony. Get to the mic before you talk, man. <laughs> typically, we'd like to have our precincts have around 800 to 1,200 people. 
And the ones that were merging, oh, I think one of them was like 250 voters. So we kind of want to try and equalize those out as we go along as much as possible. That's what I was trying, yeah, I got it. Okay, thank you. And a lot of people have the misperception this is like gerrymandering and such. Uh, will you explain that it's not? Um, no, we aren't allowed to take any political parties or anything into um, consideration when we draw our precincts. That's in the state constitution. Good. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Nope. Okay, thank you. Then uh, is there anybody that signed up on the uh, sign-up sheet in the back to testify? No, none at all? Okay. I'll ask anybody in the audience, anybody want to uh, address the commission on this issue? Okay, then uh, I'm going to close this public hearing. A motion to close the Motion to close, that's right, motion. I would move to close hey. this public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close. All in favor say aye. 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 It's closed. Thank you. Now, what is the decision of the board? I would like to make For the pleasure. a... I would like to make a motion to adopt this ordinance and uh, for the proposed legal description and precinct boundary changes, 12 precincts with boundary line adjustments, updating 11 precincts and one commissioner district legal descriptions, and repealing five precincts and legal descriptions, and the ordinance for the proposed legal description for county commissioner district number three. <clears throat> I second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the 2019 election precinct maintenance plan. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 And that, that, that carries. Thank you. Okay. That's done. Thank you very much. Now we're moving right into the uh, next public hearing. <laughs> <clears throat> this is accept and consider public comment and review revisions on ordinance amending Title VI of the Thurston County Code. The purpose. Uh, is to take public testimony on ordinance amending the, oh, okay, <laughs> number six, title six of the Thurston County Code. Um, okay, it's the ambulance ordinance, there we go. Now there's a sign-up sheet in the back, and it's the same as before. If you wish to uh, testify, sign in. You'll have three minutes to testify. I'll call your name out, come up, identify yourself, and uh, the, you'll be timed down and uh, we're not going to respond. You can't donate your time. So uh, with that in mind, I'm opening up the public hearing. So now open. Is there a staff presentation from Kurt Harding? Kurt Harding, come on up, please. Uh, good afternoon. Kurt Harden, Director of Emergency Services. Um, I did not have the foresight to prepare a PowerPoint, so I just have a few comments good. to make. Um, <laughs> The, this proposed ordinance change uh, affects only private ambulances within Thurston County. Uh, what happened is, is that uh, under the uh, Thurston County Code, the uh, EMS Council Operations Committee is required to do a, an annual review of the ambulance ordinance. Um, based on the review of this last year, we found that there were some uh, areas within the ordinance that were, in one case situation, was a little vague regarding transport of patients when a medic is on board the ambulance itself during transport. And so what we wanted to do was walk through um, the four substantive changes. We also took the opportunity to change a few, put a comma in, delete a comma, or somewhere along those lines. But the, uh, the large changes that I wanted to highlight was um, under uh, 616.010, subsection, subparagraph C, we added regional fire authority. Previously, it just discussed fire district and fire departments. And since we have a regional fire authorities in Thurston County, we updated that. Um, going further, um, we turned around and we, on uh, section 616.030, the application fee, that was changed from $20 to $100 per uh, private ambulance company regardless of the number of ambulances they run inside of Thurston County on a daily basis. And the reason for that is um, hadn't been looked at since uh, the early 90s and adjusted since the early 90s. And we also have a staff breakdown of the cost um, by staff of processing these ambulance uh, applications as well. Okay. Um, uh, under uh, 616.030, Subparagraph so I, we add in the operations committee shall inform the Emergency Medical Services Council on all applications for informational purposes. 
Previously, it was going directly from the Operations Committee to the Board of County Commissioners, and therefore we added the EMS Council for informational purposes since they have oversight and advisory for EMS purposes or EMS act actions within Thurston County. Uh, the next one, uh, the third one, uh, we added a paragraph to 616050 where it says, in the rare circumstance when a medic one paramedic accompanies a patient on the private ambulance transport unit due to emergency circumstances, the private ambulance company shall bill medic one according to their respective public rates. Uh, medic one shall set their reimbursement schedule according to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services rate schedule and shall publish this no later than January 1st of each year. No additional fee, charge, or other cost shall be submitted to the patient or their health care provider. The reason for this is when we do what we call advanced life support or ALS transport in Thurston County under Medic One and paramedics transport, there is no fee to the patient or their insurance company for transport to an emergency room. In the rare circumstances, and we estimate that out of 34,000 transports each year inside of Thurston County, we estimate about uh, about 24 to 25 a year may incur where a private ambulance company due to exigent circumstances needs a paramedic on board for life support or life-saving situations. That is considered an ALS transport. So therefore, the private ambulance company should bill medic one, not the patient for that transport. For the 24,000 transports that take place uh, that are basic life support or BLS, and private ambulance companies are a large part of that, that's appropriate for them to bill that or their insurance company uh, based on the, uh, their current rates that they put in their ambulance application. So that's a change that we want to clarify because in the past, some patients had been billed by, the pri by uh, private ambulance companies because of some vagueness within the ordinance. So we've added that. And then the last piece that we had was uh, adding the uh, uh, EMS Council to be part of the process for information when we make recommendations to ambulance ordinance changes. They were not in there previously. So those are the uh, substantive changes to the ambulance ordinance. Okay. Any questions or comments? Anything? Go ahead. Uh, this has been approved by which oversight group? Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Edwards. It was uh, hmm. reviewed by the... Uh, by the EMS Council Operations Committee and unanimously voted for recommending approval. It went to the EMS Council and then even though it was informational for the EMS Council, they recommended uh, unanimous approval as well for the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you, sir. Have you received any public comment in-house? We, we have not received any public comment and uh, it was posted uh, back in March over 20 days ago and we've not received any public comment to, to as of today. Okay. Uh, that's it then. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, there were, uh, there's a sign-up sheet. I have somebody that's signed up that wants to testify as well. I'll call you up, uh, Chris Clem. Hi, Chris. Hello, commissioners. Uh, thank you for giving me a moment to speak. Um, for the record, I, you tell us uh, your full name and where you live. Yeah, my name is Chris Clem. I'm the Director of Operations for Olympic Ambulance here in Thurston County, and I live in District 1 up near Boston Harbor. Um, so I just want to speak briefly in support of the changes to the ambulance ordinance as the largest of the private ambulance companies here in Thurston County. Um, we feel that the, the fee increase is uh, um, very timely. Obviously, it's uh, not being reviewed since the 90s. Um, we want to make sure that uh, the fee that we're paying is covering the administrative costs for the county, uh, and that's very appropriate. And as well as the change to the um, billing at the Medicare allowable um, that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services uh, put forward. Uh, that keeps us and AMR and any other private ambulance company who may eventually operate in Thurston County um, within compliance. Uh, if we bill anything less than that Medicare allowable, then it puts us at risk for our continued participation in the Medicare Medicaid program. So we wholeheartedly support the changes um, to the ambulance ordinance and like thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Nobody else has signed up, but I'm going to offer an uh, opportunity for anybody in the public that would like to address the board on this topic. None? Okay. Then uh, is there a motion to close the public hearing? I would move to close this public hearing. Second. Moved and seconded to close. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, this public hearing is closed. And the next uh, pleasure of the board? Uh, 
I guess I'd like to just comment one more time. It's been about 25 years now since this has been reviewed, and the uh, EMS Council and governing bodies have all unanimously endorsed this. I would like to make a motion to approve revisions to the Thurston County Title VI Ambulance Ordinance as listed. I second that. So it's moved and seconded to approve an ordinance amending Thurston County Code Title VI. All in favor say aye. 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 That carries. Thank you. And um, any further business on this? Nope. No, sir. This meeting's adjourned. Thank you, sir. Now it's sock to me time, or we're taking a break? Uh, 3.30, you come back at Board of Health. When's the sock picture thing? Oh, right now. Thank That's you. Get the sock oh, puppet oh. out of the way. What, what is it right now? Yeah.